Hello, everyone, and welcome to our video on HIV. So excited. So first, let's talk about the regular stuff about HIV that's boring. We just got to get through. So let's get started. First, HIV is a retrovirus. It's enveloped. It's positive sense. It's RNA, and it's double-stranded RNA, meaning it has two copies of RNA that are identical. It has a conical capsid made of P24. And this is important because our antibodies bind to it. And that's what's going to be used in identifying HIV when we test for it. So there are three enzymes that HIV carries with it that are important. It's reverse transcriptase, protease, and integrase. And we'll get into why those are important later. But mostly it's because of the drugs we use to block those enzymes. Now, when you have a patient with HIV, how are you going to know that they're going to have HIV? How do you know to test them? Well, when HIV first presents, it's going to present kind of like a mono, mononucleosis or flu-like illness. And sometimes you can get a maculopapular rash. So what that means is when you see a patient like that, you're not really going to be thinking HIV. That's why it's a good idea to test sexually active adults or adults at risk for HIV around once a year just to make sure that people don't have it because most people with HIV are asymptomatic. Um, and the other time that HIV is symptomatic is when you start developing AIDS, when your CD4 count drops. And so you can start getting certain opportunistic infections, which we'll talk about later. And also you can have complications like dementia because HIV can infect microglial cells. You can have pulmonary hypertension or you can have cardiomyopathy. So now that you guys know a little bit about HIV and how it presents, let's talk about diagnosis. So the old way of diagnosing HIV was with ELISA and Western blot. Now what we do is called the fourth generation test. And the fourth generation test is when you have, um, when you test for antigen and antibodies and specifically the P24 antigen and the antibodies to P24. So we test for this now, and it's a little bit more sensitive and specific than ELISA and Western blot, and it's less time consuming. Um, so when we have a positive test for HIV, um, we have to test for HIV-1 or HIV-2. And there's also special situations in which we have to test for HIV in different ways than just doing the antigen antibody test. For example, if you suspect, suspect an acute infection with a patient that has an acute mononucleosis-like illness, you can just test for HIV RNA because there's no antibodies to P24 yet. And also for, um, for babies, which will have the antibodies from mom, but you're not sure if they actually have active HIV infection, just the antibodies from mom, you can do a PCR test for the babies. All right. Now let's get into some more stuff that's not super high yield, but it'll be a gateway into more high yield things. So what's inside an HIV virion? So an HIV virion will have inside it genes that code for three proteins, which will then get broken down into many different things that will be high yield for your exams. The three genes and proteins are GAG, pole, and ENV. GAG, codes for P24 and other things, and other protein is P20, P4, sorry, P17, which you can see right here. It's a part of the matrix of the HIV virion. Also, pole um, codes for RNA transcriptase, sorry, reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease, which you can see here, thanks to Dr. Ryan's beautiful, um, beautiful slide from Boards and Beyond. Also, you have N, and NF code codes for GP160, which then breaks down to GP120 and GP41. And protease, this thing right here, this thing right here is what's going to break down all of these big proteins into small proteins. And it's very important. So how does HIV use GP120 to bind to ourselves? Now I'm going to go into a high yield topic, which you guys have to know. It came up on my U World questions like 30 times. And I hated this because I never learned it when before studying for step one. So I want to teach it to you guys. So we're going to get into a topic called HIV tropism. HIV tropism is basically the selectivity of which cells HIV binds to. 
So when HIV binds, it needs to bind to our native receptors. And the ones that it targets are two receptors, which are under the class of chemokine receptors. One of them is called CCR5. And if HIV targets this one, it's known as M-tropic. M-tropic because it binds to monocytes and macrophages. So monocytes and macrophages will have the CCR5 receptor and HIV will, will bind to it. And this primarily happens during primary infections. So if a patient is having sex and they are exposed to HIV, the HIV particles will bind to the epithelial cells and um, eventually get to the monocytes and macrophages inside their mucus linings. So this is CCR5. CXCR4, on the other hand, is known as a T. If HIV binds to CXCR4, this binding process is known as T-tropism. So this is what happens later on in infection when HIV replicates and wants to infect other cells within our body, not for primary infection. So a question for you guys, which receptor mutation would confer immunity to HIV? And the answer to that will be CCR5, because if CCR5 is mutated, HIV cannot bind to the initial cells that it wants to bind to on mucosal surfaces. So it can't infect you that way. All right, so now let's get deeper into this. And this is the really high yield stuff that the boards love to ask you about. So as you can see here from Dr. Ryan and Boards and Beyond, he has this wonderful picture of how HIV binds to our cells. And you can see over here the CCR5 receptor and the CXCR4 receptor. And this is the CD4 ligand that helps with this binding process. So you see that CD4 over here is gonna bind to GP120, which is the not fusion molecule, but it's the docking molecule. So the docking molecule GP120, CCR5 or CXCR4 and CD4, all of these come together and HIV docks to a cell. And then GP41 is the fusion protein. And with GP41, the molecule, the HIV capsule and virion, it goes into our cells and it's allowed to infect, infect us. So how are we gonna remember this? Because this comes up on questions a lot. So this is my method of remembering this, and it goes like this. GP41, once the virus has one. So basically, GP41 is the second protein to activate once the virus has already docked. So now it's the fusion part. So GP41, once virus has one, is for fusion. And the drug that is used to block this process is called enfuvertide. Enfuvertide. I don't know how to pronounce it. And so enfevertide right here, the way you can remember that is with enfevertide, they don't get combined, right? So GP41, once the virus has one, with enfevertide, they don't get combined. Okay, now for GP120, GP120 is the first protein that binds to your cells from HIV, and it's the docking molecule. And the way you're going to remember that is GP120, it's coming after you, honey. It's coming after you. It's going to get you. And the drug that prevents this from happening is called Miravirac. Miravirac, so you don't dock. That's it. If you just remember these mnemonics, you'll be fine. You'll never get these questions wrong, I promise. All right, so the last thing before we go on to drugs, which is gonna be a separate video, is gonna be CD4 counts and prophylaxis. So basically, um, once your CD4 count starts dropping below 200, you're susceptible to pneumocystis pneumonia. And to prevent this from happening, you're going to give your patients TMP, SMX, or trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole. And once you start dropping below 100, you're at risk for PCP as well, and also toxo, toxoplasmosis. So for toxo, you also give TMP, SMX. And at the same time, you're at risk for histoplasmosis, so you give itraconazole. And if your CD4 count keeps dropping below that and gets to below 50, you're at risk for mycobacterium avium complex, for which you're going to give azithromycin. And to the right of the screen here, you can see um, 
some screenshots from Sketchy. Just to remind you, this is for PCP. You can see the scoreboard is 20 to zero. For toxoplasmosis, you have the, what is this guy again? The Ben Franklin cat, that's right. And he's holding the $100 bill to remind you of CD4 counts less than 100. And you have the smelly egg, the um, sulfa, the sulfa egg that you can use to treat it. Here's the histoplasmosis one. And then this is the speed limit 50 for mycobacterium avium. And then just wanted to remind you guys with this next thing here, this is a screenshot from first aid. And it just goes to show you that even though these are, these are the infections you are getting prophylaxis for, they're not the only infections that can affect patients with HIV and AIDS when their CD4 count drops. So any of these that you see here, if a patient has, you want to be thinking about HIV and AIDS on your differential and a low CD4 count. And the next video is farm. Please check that video out as soon as I upload it. And if I missed anything in this video, you feel like there's something that's not high yield in it, or there's something that I didn't put in that is very high yield, please let me know so I can make another video or edit this one. Also comment, like, subscribe. You know how it goes. And email me smoothbuttermd at gmail.com if you have any questions or for any reason, whatever. And then at the top here, I have the first aid pages that I used. Um, this is just for your reference. If you guys want to screenshot this, let me see in a little bit. There you go. And then these are screenshots from Sketchy Micro and Farm, along with some annotations that I got from people older than me that went through this process before. You can screenshot this if you want. These are some of the drugs we're gonna be talking about in the next video. And that's it. And also just wanted to let you guys know this presentation was from Boards and Beyond. So I took a lot of stuff from Dr. Ryan and just synthesized it for you guys in a shorter medium. So that's it guys, good luck. Hope this was helpful.